For this Photoshop tutorial, we're going to take a look at how to remove a white background from your image. Now we're going to start off with something simple. So let's say you've got yourself a logo or some text with a white background that you want to remove. The most basic and simple tool to use is definitely the magic wand tool. Now this is the fourth tool down and you want to right click if you can't see it and it will be this one right here. This one allows you to left click once and then this will pretty much select the color that you clicked on. And once you've got it selected, you would then right click on your layer and make sure it's a rasterized layer. And then you just simply press delete and then that will delete the background. And then of course you would left click on this one, delete on that one as well. And then finally for the very last one, press delete. Now this tool is great, but it has its limitations. So let's say for example, we have an image like this where you have the image, which also contains a lot of white color. This is going to try its best. So as you can see, it has tried, but it also has selected everything else, which is what we don't want it to do. And if we were gonna to try to, let's say, create a mask and invert it, so Control and I, you can see that it's transparent inside of where we don't want it to be transparent. The other two options, the other two tools that are good for removing a white background and the ones that can save you time is definitely the newest one, which is the object selection tool. But if you don't have a newer version of Photoshop, so let's say you don't have Photoshop 2020, then you can always use the quick selection tool that does the job just as well. With this one, it's pretty simple. You've got yourself the square brackets to make it smaller or larger. And then you've got yourself a new selection, a add and a subtract. And all you have to do is left click and then drag it out and this will start to select the background. As you can see, some areas won't be perfect and that's when you would hold Alt or Option key and then take it away from here. As you can see, we can keep on readjusting it until it does a better job. So at the moment, it isn't looking too bad. Another key to this as well, if you make the brush size a lot smaller, it is going to be more accurate. So we can do this right here. If you want to, you can hold Alt or Option key and then scroll up to zoom in. Now we're going to pretty much select this bit right here. And then of course, we've got to also do this bit right here. Another shortcut is you can hold Alt or Option key and make it smaller and then select this area right here. And once you're happy with everything, you can then go ahead and create yourself a mask. But a lot of the time it may do this and it's pretty simple to fix this. All you gotta do is press Control and I and then that will invert it. Now, if yours is the opposite and it does this instead, this is the color. So you pretty much want to make sure that you don't invert the color and you actually select the mask itself and then that will invert it. So control and I to swap it over. Let's take it one step further and let's say we've got ourselves a person. Let's say we've just got some pictures from a photo shoot and we need to change the color of the background or just remove it completely. With this one, I highly recommend the new tool which is the object selection tool. So if we left click and then drag it out and select the person, it will do a really good job on selecting the person. If yours doesn't, then that's fine. You can always re-edit the points. Let's say you can add on to here if you wanted to readjust it. And you can also use the polygonal lasso tool, which is the third tool down and the middle one. And with this one, all you have to do is left click and then add yourself an extra line on top of it. Let's say if you wanted to create this, then you would hold control or command and then connect it up. And as you can see, that has connected it up. To do the opposite, it would be you hold Alt or Option key and then take it away from here. Once again, hold control or command and then connect it up from here. And then once you've got yourself the selection, what you would do next is you would go to the second tool or you can have the object selection tool. You'll see this button right here, which will say select and mask. So you can either do it in there or here. And once you've pressed that button, it will pretty much remove the background. Now, what you can do in here is you can refine some of the areas. So for example, we can use the refine brush tool and we can fix up some areas. For example, the hair right here, we can make it look a lot better and remove the background from here. We can also do it here and just make it look a lot better. Right there as well. And then once you're happy with everything, you can scroll to the bottom where it says output two, and then set this one to a new layer with layer mask and then press okay. And then once you've done that, 
If you wanted to, you can get yourself a background by going to the half circle, half filled circle, and then go to solid color, and then get yourself a color, and then move this underneath your selection. And as you can see, it looks really good. And if you wanted to, you can always click on this one and always change the color to anything that you want it to be. Now let's say you don't have a newer version of Photoshop and you have the quick selection tool instead. You would do the same thing and once again you would hold Alt and then drag the right side of the mouse out. You would select the person, make sure the edges are all in. And then once again you can go to the same option, the select the mask right here, right at the top. And then once again go to the second tool. You can zoom in with the zoom tool which is right here and then remove the areas from here. And then once again, once you're happy with everything, go all the way to the bottom, and then of course, output to select the new layer with layer mask, and then press okay. Now, sometimes you will reach problems like this, where it looks a little bit like this, and that's completely fine. What you can do is you can press Control and J to get yourself another layer on top of that one, and then that will fill it in. So that's how you'll fix that problem right there. And then all you have to do is combine these two together. So hold shift and then click on the bottom one and then right click on it and convert smart object. And if we get ourselves a new solid and then drag this one underneath, you can see everything is looking good. Now, sometimes you have problems like this. Now, what you can do to fix this is you can create yourself a new layer. And then in that layer, what you can do is you can get yourself the brush tool, get yourself a black color or you can copy the color of the hair. So for example, we're working with this sort of color and then you can hold control and then click on the thumbnail to select it and then pretty much paint on the color to make it more visible. It's a lot better on the edges because it makes it more visible. And we can also do it there as well. And then press Ctrl and D to deselect it. And that is looking a little bit better. You're probably wondering, what if I've got an image like this where it's more difficult and it'll take a lot of time to do it manually? There's a little trick that you can do for this. So you need to make sure that you have your adjustments open. If you don't have them open, you can go to Window and go down to Adjustments, which is right there. And then once you've got your adjustments, you want to open it up. Yours will probably be in here or a separate panel by itself. You can snap it on wherever you want. Make sure you're selecting your main image and then you want to get yourself the levels. And then once you've got yourself the levels, you pretty much want to play about with the middle slider until you get the image to be more darker. Now you don't want it to be too dark because the darker the image, the more pixelated the end result will be. So let's say about here, that is a good number. The reason for this is because we want to contrast the image or the background as much as possible. And then once you've done that, select your main layer, go to select, and then go to color range. In color range, you pretty much want to click on the white area and then make sure fuzziness is on 200, selection, none, and then press okay. And then once you've got yourself a selection, you can create yourself a mask. If yours is like this, you want to press control and I to invert it or command and I. And then as you can see, the background is now gone. If you wanted to, you can hide this one. And just to give you a little preview with a solid color. So it's not looking too bad at the moment. It's a little bit transparent, but that's easily fixable. You could just press Control and J to duplicate it a few times, and then that will make it more solid. And this is what I mean by the pixelated area. If you increase the levels too high, it will be more visible with these areas. And now all you can do is hold Shift, click on the bottom one, convert these into a smart object, right click on it and rasterize layer. And then you just pretty much fix up the areas by using the eraser tool and going around these areas. You can also use the background eraser tool. And this one is a lot better for removing things like this, as you can see. It's a lot quicker. You pretty much want to have tolerance on 20, contiguous, and then this one right here and just go around the image. And that's pretty much it.